Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. It occurs to me that we have a drilling unit around Paul right now, and I never built refueling infrastructure around Minmus, which is sort of a basic thing to do. And, you know, Earth Orbit, st not Earth Orbit Station, Kerbin Orbit Station, we don't really have a good one. Um, we, we haven't, we've sort of skipped over a whole bunch of stuff that I probably should have done already. And so I, I want in this video to go ahead and start ISRU on Minmus. And fortunately we have this contract, Recover Flong, I guess Flong? Flong's Scrap from Orbit of Minmus. Well, with a name like that, we can't possibly ignore that. And it's pretty lucrative too. Uh, the scrap doesn't look too huge, though 2.8 meters is an interesting size, uh, but we'll definitely take it. And we are going to uh, use that as an excuse for uh, building up our ISRU in the Kerbin system. Uh, we also have this Explore Paul. Now, last time I left the drilling unit around Paul, even though we have a contract to position a satellite in equatorial orbit of Val, and we could have transferred it from Paul to Val, but I thought that maybe it'd be useful to just keep it at Paul and have some smaller vessel, because we don't want to lug the ISRU unit and the research lab all the way from Paul to Val when really the all the equipment should be around Paul and we could just send a little tiny vessel to grab some fuel from Paul or something and then go off to Val and be a little satellite for a while so we don't really need to send the whole deal over to Val we can just uh, pick up the fuel from our drilling unit and I think that's a more efficient option so and now we have this Explore Paul contract that will pay for the trip of that little probe to Paul to grab the fuel, right? So we can just send it over there and then it can uh, go, go over to Paul, grab the fuel and then go ahead to Val and probably not the surface of lathe. We'll think about that. That's a little bit complicated. Uh, bring a lathe stone back though. If we go to the surface of lathe, maybe the best scientific data we can do is a Kerbal. Land a Kerbal on lathe, get the lathe stone, which, well, it's in one of these biomes. That's a little bit difficult because it's mostly water around lathe, so we have to be careful. And I think a space plane might be the best thing to do there. We have to pick up lathe stone and then we can bring it back. So we'll have that contract. And then there's also this surface outpost on Ike. Now that's really lucrative. The completion is 1 million. Uh, but we need three scientists there. It must be on motorized wheels. Uh, it needs to support eight Kerbos, have a lab, have ISRU. Though I'll, I would like those anyway. So that's the positive side. And ISRU on Ike is reasonably useful. So we will do that. I think, and we've got these other Ike contracts just sitting here waiting for us to do. So possibly, it depends on which uh, transfer window we have next, but possibly we'll be doing Ike next. We will see. So I'm, I'm not interested in the repairing the satellite in orbit. I don't, uh, the, the mapping stuff will wait on. Uh, this 10 asteroids and three comets, but it doesn't pay very much compared to everything else. So I'll leave that and I, Drez is not really in our scope right now. So, but the first thing is I want to see about Flong in orbit of Minmus and try and get Minmus ISRU started. Okay, well, I've cooked up quite a complicated system that probably is too complicated. First of all, we have a little Mark 1 lander can. There's a probe core underneath the docking port. That's one of the probe double nine Octo 2s. So this does not have to be crewed, but if we want an engineer to speed things up, it can be. We've got the radiators, we've got fuel cells, we've got RCS because it has to dock and transfer its fuel, and it will dock to a ISRU station around Minmus. So we'll carry the or up raw and uh, instead of carrying the ISR unit up and down all the time and we have fuel here uh, this 
uh, loaded up does not have a whole lot of delta V. You can see I didn't put a huge amount of fuel and there's a lot of ore to carry. So we'll see how that works out. Two terriers, two drills. I decided not to do a drill on one side and something else on the other side. Now, did I, I, I've got these little uh, commutatrons, so it's going to have to relay through the station, and the station does have relay antennae down here. The station is this whole deal, uh, from the cupola on down to the engines. Well, except the engines, I'm hoping, are not going to be sticking around with the station. You can see the docking port here. It will release this. There's a structural tube. Inside the structural tube, is a uh, probe core, a cl claw, because we have to grab uh, that one Kerbal's stuff and the Kerbal. So we've got the claw, we've got the probe core, batteries, RCS, and uh, and we also want to bring the engines back is the trick here. And I know that Flong is in a cupola, so I think the cupola can be clawed and fit within these nose cones, which are along with the skiff engines. And then we will, not, not the shroud, we will just bring the whole engine cluster and flong and everything down here back, except we need parachutes. I forgot about the parachutes until just now. So, uh, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm probably gonna be forgetting a lot of things, huh? This is dangerous. At least the structural tubes seem to uh, I guess we'll put them up here. I don't know how many we'll need. Um, one for each engine, one for the center bit, and one for the cupola. I'm sure eight will be more than enough, I think. Let's see. Okay, that should be clear of any obstructions. Let me shift it down just a little bit. So we claw uh, Flong's pod and bring it all back home, uh, releasing from here using RCS to return. I don't know if this has enough RCS fuel though. Maybe I should do put more of that because all we have is a 1.25 meter one. And uh, I'm loath to take this apart because it's actually hard to put it together. Because <laughs> um, uh, I tried using a engine plate to you know, recover the engines and have this stuff at the center, right? But the fuel wasn't cross-feeding through the engine plate right, so that wasn't working out very well. And so I came up with this with the structural tube, but it's it, it took some flipping things around and such, so maybe that'll help our mob propellant capacity for the return. I might also want to consider using the Werner engines. No, not the Werner engines. The I was I guess the OMS like engines, these puffs are that's a little bit well, it's not that heavy. You know, okay. The question is how much delta V is this, and I have no idea. We're gonna find out whether we have enough delta V after we grab the pod, and if we need to send some more fuel, we'll figure out a way to do that. That's going to be inconvenient, though. But it's got a lot to carry back home. But then coming back home from Minmus is only a 250 meter per second deal. So hopefully it's not going to be too bad. Yeah. But it's a complicated situation. And I don't even know if we have enough propellant to get to where we're going. Uh, if we take a look at the vacuum specific uh, vacuum delta V, uh, we've got about... 5,200 altogether. That's cutting it close when it comes to getting to Minmus. And worse, our thrust weight ratio isn't great. Off the ground, we're 1.26. By the time we switch over to the skiffs, of which we have four, it's only 0.75. So, I might want more boosters. I mean, 0.75 is cutting it tight, so. We'll do it like that. You'll note that the fairing is very carefully crafted around the boosters, basically. We go straight up, out, and then wrap around that. So that's another little finicky thing. But okay, so now we've got the boosters, clamps, and engines running. We have to run the engines, otherwise it won't uh, drain enough fuel to have much 
thrust to weight ratio. And because we've increased the thrust on the first stage, we can now decrease the thrust limiter here. And that'll decrease our sea level and increase our vacuum by not much. <laughs> you know what? Maybe we should just enjoy the ride on this stage. I mean, 2,636 is a lot. It'll get us pretty close to orbit. I don't know if we need need to send an engineer, but we would like to send an engineer. I guess we don't need to send an engineer. It's best not to risk it, I think. I think we'll send an engineer later. We can presumably do everything automated. May, uh, I might have uh, missed putting a core on this. Gosh darn it. Okay, we need to put a core on it. It'll be an interesting sort of deal. All right, nobody inside. No Megan. Um, Shepgun is our only available engineer right now. I d didn't actually check what Flong was. Might be an engineer, might not be. We need engineers, we'll see. Okay, let's go. Okay, here we go. It's wiggling a bit, throttle up, SAS on, and... Launch! Quite a thing. It occurs to me that our gimbling we need to watch out for, though. This might not be the most stable thing. Actually, it's pretty good so far. But maybe it's because I'm trying to be careful. The sheer power of the Clydesdales... ...might be overwhelming the atmosphere. Yeah, I probably didn't need to worry about the Delta V. We probably... Maybe we could have gotten away with just the two boosters, even. Should have done three. It's always stylish. Uh, we're gonna have to breathe the heat here. Too much power. Too much power. I mean, whatever fuel that we have left, it'll just remain with the station, and visiting craft can use it, so it's no big deal that we have extra. Having too little would be a problem. And fairings. Of course they were confetti because it's safer that way. We have an awkward high starting orbit. We probably won't put the periapsis quite so high. 144, well 145 by 110. And Minmus. We will need some time to turn towards the node. This is not the most maneuverable thing without the RCS on. And I don't want to turn on the RCS too soon. Okay, and go. I wonder what kind of orbit Flong is in. Technically we don't need to chase that. Should be okay. Uh, well, that's a little bit high. Oh, there's a moon encounter getting in the way. Um, uh, that's a moon crash. Uh, well, that explains why we're having trouble. Okay, I didn't really want to use the RCS for that, but we avoided the moon encounter and we've got an okay... I mean, it's pretty high periapsis, but it's okay. It's better than a moon encounter. Um, Flong is not that one. That one. Okay. So we have to make sure we're going in the right direction, which we currently are, though we need to lift that up a bit. So we'll do that after we pass by the moon's orbit, and we proceed. I want to wait till we pass by the moon's orbit, just in case there's a ghost encounter right now. I don't even know how we were encountering the moon. But okay. Maybe it was on a subsequent orbit and it was just looking complicated. Okay, that's basically what I want. We'll still have some inclination, but it'll be manageable. And Flong's orbit will be our new station's orbit. Okay, and let's correct that. Alright, that should be good enough. And continuing to Minmus. Uh, it's a little bit far away. We'll fix it later. I mean, it's got, uh, Flong's got a lopsided orbit anyway. 
Okay, we do have to worry about comms. I think our periapsis will be past where Mimus will be blocking us. So that'll be okay. Um, I do want to go radial in and correct that so that we can bring that periapsis in. It's a bit tedious though, with this turning. But we're not carrying that much mob propellant. And actually we have to be careful not to use the mob propellant that's supposed to bring this cluster back, so... It's a bit awkward, but I'll take this um, with an encounter over there, 34 meters per second. So we'll be in a more circular orbit and we'll just, just sort of shift our orbit over when we get to Flung. And making orbit. We'll have comms at the encounter point. Oh, we're closer than I thought we would be, actually, on this bit. Okay, that should do it. All right. Moment of truth. A couple. We have control over this. Hmm, RCS. Uh, this way. Aha! It is free. The situation with the clamp is very... You know, specific. Uh, I hope the structural tube doesn't get in the way. If this wasn't the cupola, this would be a tighter fit, but we know 2.5 meters is the diameter of that structural tube, so. But let's be honest, Flong is in dire. a dire situation with this. This is a heck of a thing. Well, I feel like that's close to the orientation of Flong's pod, so we'll go with that for now. And I'll adjust. As far as our Delta V, I don't think we have enough, actually. We are in a high orbit around Minmus, though. Okay. That doesn't look too bad. It's wiggling, though. Okay, we've got it. Um, so we've done the first bit. Flong is an engineer. That's good. So we really don't want to kill her. Um, yeah, but 218 meters per second. Is that enough? We are in a high orbit. Oh, that's only 41 right there. Uh, but that's still high over Kerbin. We might be in luck. Okay, so we won't be we won't be in the atmosphere like that, but we'll have thirty meters per second left to get in the atmosphere. We must turn off S the RCS right now. All our RCS will have to go to the puff engines. Those two hundred eighteen meters per second better be what we have. Okay, so we'll we'll take care of this first and do the flong thing. Okay, well, tight margins here. Let's see what happens. And go. Oh shoot, it's the wrong way. Gosh darn it, it seemed like the right way from the RCS. Oh boy. Now we're in a worse pickle. Okay. Let's make sure it's actually doing the thing properly, alright. We could have gotten the moon's help, but gosh darn it. 22. So when we get out here... Will that 22 be enough? That's efficient enough. Our ambitious rescue attempt, plus engine cluster return attempt, continues. 25 kilometers sounds like it's going to be good enough. All right. We will continue to want to hold retrograde. I'm going to work on the parachutes here. So they are armed. That was a sound and a half. And it's leaving this gap these days for some reason. But okay. 
guess because it figures there are eight of them. Uh, th okay, I think they it wanted to show all eight, but didn't, and then left the space. It's weird. Okay. Inflating the heat shield. Attracting solar panels. Attracting the antennae. And uh, before I do that, let's make sure we're surface retro. And we're coming in. Well, it's a good thing I put those little spherical tanks on the side there. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I should have known right away that uh, just that one tank would not be enough for this if we were relying solely on mod propellant, but that was tighter than I would have liked it to be. If Long had been in a lower orbit around Minmus, it might have been troublesome. Okay, we are through re-entry. Well, overdid the parachutes. Got five meters per second. Okay, wow, it's bouncing on its point. Well, flop. All right, don't roll, recover. All right, we got Flong back. Let's test the ISRU unit, which basically the Flong recovery contract was just an excuse for doing it. So, you know, so that we could get funding for the ISRU unit. Yep, all check marked. So, on to drilling. Just for simplicity, I think I'd like to round out the orbit here. I don't know if it takes too much extra for the driller to get up to the higher orbit versus the lower orbit. The problem is we are missing our engines now. <laughs> so what we need to do is uh, lock the RCS up here, otherwise it's going to start using it. Oh, it occurs to me we need to scan, don't we? Oh, shoot. <laughs> We probably need... We haven't scanned Minmus, have we? I should have put a scanner on. That's not a scanner, is it? Elon Combo Mission? Let me see. We should have scanned Minmus, darn it. It'd be a good thing to scan. But it says no resource data available. You'll need to perform an orbital survey first. Okay, slap this together rather quickly. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Just a very simple deal. A low tech, if you will, with the little swivel engine at the bottom. And of course, a terrier on the upper stage. Nothing fancy at all. And launch. Big ol' fairing, which is why we have the fins. And also, why we'll go up for some time before I start turning. I've forgotten how finicky little small rockets are. Little small rockets. Okay. Well, fairings. Staging and ignition. And let's get those antennae. Well, let's wait a sec on the antennae, I guess. I actually put a little gravioli detector just in case. I don't remember if we brought one over to Minmus. So... There might be science. Well, the scanner itself gives science, too. I think we'll test the drilling unit next time, and we'll test it in order to fulfill something, maybe. That would be best. There will be a point to it. Rather than just a test. But I have to figure out what the heck that point is going to be. Okay, going. That should be close enough. If we stop wiggling. Alright. Let's go there. Inclination 97.4. Hmm. I think maybe we want to get between 85 and 95. And what is the actual altitude that our, that is our limit? 25 and 300. So this will be fine. 70-ish kilometers. And our comm lines seem good. Well, it's about time we scan Minmus, darn it. 
And this is amazing. There's been miss. All right, making orbit. Oh, that's a little bit low on the periapsis. Whoops. Very easy to overdo things on Minmus or around Minmus. All right, that'll that'll be fine for the scanner. Let's do that. Okay, we got that done. Now, what about the gravioli? Well, there's some science. More for recovery, but uh, did I put enough power? I didn't put enough power again, did I? Well, uh, at least it has solar panels so it can recharge and um, well, see if we can allow partial. Whoops. Okay, review data, transmit. Okay, that's done. And we could get more, but I don't feel a pressing need for more right now. Let's check the scan data. Um, well, right there would be good once it gets into daylight. 60%. Yep, and that seems like the best place by far. Forget which flat that is, but we'll try and land the drilling lander in there next time. But I want a mission to pair with it so that the mission will dock to the Minmus station. It'd have to be something that's going pretty far out to justify coming all the way to Minmus in order to go somewhere else. Or maybe, you know what, instead of that, we'll have a tanker that goes between this Minmus orbit and Earth, uh, not Earth, Kerbin orbit uh, to refuel things. Maybe that would be best. Hmm, that takes 1,000 meters per second. I guess that's not too bad. Well, I'll think about that. So I want to develop some sort of thing that will justify the existence of this Minmus ISRU system, and we'll work on that next time. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.